Oh my gosh, they, they got know. porgs. They they got a box set with three po with two porgs in it. <laughs> oh, is one of them already cooked? Uh, no, it's it's. <laughs> Oh, it's... that was sad oh, too. Oh, one of them. One of them is the actual. I think that's the actual one that watches Chewbacca eat the other one because he's like his head is his head is tilted. He's, he's like all sad face. Glossy eye. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, what does Hayden Christensen think about Figure Nights Theater? I hate them all. Not the face, okay. I just had it grow. Oh. All right, welcome to FKT number 19, titled Blitz Scream, a.k.a. our big SDCC show. I'm Drew, and with us tonight are Josh. Hello, Drew. Well, hello, Drew. So long, farewell, <laughs> I'll see you saying goodnight. And R.D. Blade. What's up, Internet? I'm not going to sing. I cannot no. top that. <laughs> and Andrew is on assignment, but I am editing. All right, so let's roll through here. Oh, who added a shameless knockoff to what they got recently? Ooh. Well, then, Josh, you get to start. What you got recently? I got a shameless knockoff. Uh, <laughs> I've had it for a while, but I wasn't on last last uh, last podcast to talk about it. But I got Legendary Toys LT02, which is their knockoff uh, masterpiece movie Optimus Prime with all of the pretty paints and the shiny and the fixing of all of the everything that was wrong <laughs> with the official one. But that's the one where you got version one, yes, not version I actually two, did. and had to fix some things yourself. Right? Um. I didn't really have to fix anything. Uh, well, I, th I think I might have had to like shave off a little bit of mold flash here and there, but even th but that that I don't really count that. That's true. That's good. Yeah, because you have to do that on official. Yeah, stuff like that. Too, that's so. just like random quality control. That honestly, if I were a quality control guy looking those things over, I'd I'd just kind of pass it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the, the only real issues I have with mine are there's something wonky with one of his wrists, uh, where the, where that, that, uh, that panel that has the, the flames on it that slides over his, that slides around, swings around his arm, the little, little rectangle panel that isn't secured in on one of his arms. So I can lift it out and then his hand will fall out but it's not like if i flip him over and shake him it won't come out i have to pull it out so that's gotcha. and it, but it does seem to leave his that that wrist a little wibbly but it's not a super issue It'll, the only time it's loose is when i'm physically transforming it from one position to the next but it locks in place either in either spot then that's not really much yeah issue. it's and I wish it Wibbly weren't... is the predecessor to Wobbly, right? Yes. Timey wimey. Yes. Excellent. Good work, gentlemen. Oh, uh, okay. So, RD, did you open any of those toys you've had well, since we on, started hang this on. podcast? I got more. <laughs> you yes. got more. I also got the Mister Bucket upgrade kit for that one, and the, it's the shiny hands one. Uh, but both, both Mister Bucket, Mister Bucket is what it's called, and their logo is like. Mm. It's it's Tarn holding a cigar for some reason. Weird. It's so cute, mm -hmm. actually. But uh, that's it's a really great set. Comes with a new set of swords. Oh, that's the other issue that my version of the of the Prime has is that his swords don't actually fit in his wrists. Like they won't go all the way. But in. you got upgraded. I one. did, and those like clip onto the backs of his hands, and I hate that. I hate I hate the way oh, no. all that integrates. I'm hoping uh, over time I can like convince some some Shapeways person to make because it's it's a very easy fix to make 
a secondary piece because of the way the upgrade kit works is you can actually swap out adapters on it to either make the weapons yeah. handheld or peg into the backs of his hands so it would be very simple to create another adapter to make them plug into the hole in his arm so if i if i can if anyone's listening is interested in that <laughs> let me know so i can buy it from you i think i think some of us have previous relationships with mr john bonatron hmm. so he's the guy that made that rung oh yes that i have and joseph has and our D, didn't you have a dealing with this guy too? Yeah, he's a he's yeah. an old, he's an old friend of mine. Um, okay, yeah, that's, I knew there was some kind of connection there. I just couldn't remember what it was. Uh, okay, so you done, yeah, Josh? That, that, that's all I've got. I'm, I mean, apart right, from a so car, which, which is why I don't have anything else now. <laughs> we won't have anything for a while. <laughs> skids, right? Yes, I named it Skids. Skids. He got an oversized Skids. Ha, ha, ha. Awesome. Doesn't transform though. I don't really get the point. It's a reverse action master. He's <laughs> <laughs> got the Autobot symbols, right? Yep. He just go. needs that big red stripe. <laughs> okay, so... Artie, what'd you open? Um, nothing. No, no. <laughs> no I, what'd uh, you buy? Yeah, can, Does it count if I haven't received it yet? Are you going to receive it... Oh. Uh, We'll let it slide since you don't seem to have anything else. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, well, I do have something. I, I got. Oh, the, okay. I got the display case. Oh right. Uh, from Toys R Us. Oh. Yeah, it was a. Uh, it was originally a video game display case with two sliding glass doors. Uh, pretty huge. Takes up like uh, I don't know twenty percent of the room that it's in. <laughs> <laughs> And I stuffed it with cheap, with GI Joes. It has a it has a pegboard on the inside, so I just put a bunch of pegs in and, oh, and put all nice. put all my mint on, mint on sealed card GI Joes in there. Oh, that's clever. Yeah, it looks it's a pretty awesome display. It has a light up top as well. Sweet. Oh, I feel like that kind of defeats the purpose of having a glass case. Like, yes, let's put things that are already packaged and won't collect dust in there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Does a glass yeah, case yeah, actually a prevent point. dust anyway? Uh, yeah, it okay. does. I don't know. I've never tried. So, so what's common? Um, the rest of Abominus. Oh. Uh, and this is the yeah, Power I, of the Primes one. Yes, hmm. it's uh, BBTS just put them up. I think for pre -or no for uh for sale. They're in stock. Cool. Yeah, they're in stock. So uh, all three of them come together, sixty bucks, and they're on their way. And while I was there, I also pre-ordered the Abominus upgrade kit uh, from Transform Dream Dreamwave. Mm. That sounds correct. Yeah, I got that kit coming. So that's it. Nice choice, RD. I also pre-ordered that same upgrade kit. It looks awesome. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Uh, cool. Well, I didn't get anything since uh, last week when I was on here doing the other show we did. Uh, and Andrew has left us a quick note about Pack for Life showing the panels on the Ocular Max Vortex. So apparently he does not have fists sticking out in robot mode. They are covered with a flap. Cool. So over the weekend, SDCC happened... And first up is Marvel Legends. So, looks like we've got a second Black Panther Marvel Cinematic Universe wave, all with face scanning. Uh, Killmonger in fatigues. Uh, unmasked Black Panther. A T'Chaka Black Panther with ceremonial robes, which sounds pretty cool. Uh, Ulysses Claw with an arm weapon. And M'Baku is the Build-A-Figure. Eric Killmonger has an unmasked face, of course, and he comes with the tribal mask. And there is also a Black Panther T'Challa with his vibranium powering going on, so he has pink and purple lines on his suit. There is also an Ao with two alternate heads, so you can make Wakanda's Dora Milaje, the uh, Guardian Women. 
Uh, cool. Uh, anybody picking any of those up? Nope. Uh, I might pick up uh, a Black Panther. T'Challa. The T'Chaka? The t- oh, the Dunmask T'Challa. Yeah. Cool. Um, awesome. These uh, rider things are pretty cool. There's Deadpool on a Vespa. Interesting. With a, and, and I'm pretty sure it's Deadpool and a... Was it Deadpool and a chick Deadpool and a dog and a squirrel or something? <laughs> I see I see Deadpool, I see a dog, and I see a squirrel. Deadpool, okay, so dog, dog pool, and, and squirrel a... pool. Squirrel pool. I don't know if that's an actual thing, I just said it. Is that real? Well, it says, yes, that's what I said, squirrel pool. So apparently that is a thing. I don't know how that relates back to the unflappable squirrel girl, or whatever it's called. I, I don't know. I don't know what a Drew squirrel knows his girl is. is. Squirrel girl is apparently this really um, heavy, like, not heavy, uh, very big deal, like, girl power Marvel hmm. character that's kind of new and got a lot of uh, rave reviews. I know she's and getting a TV then... series. Is she yep. really? Awesome. Like, how new is she? I don't know. Okay. I'm sure Andrew could tell us, but I mean, I'm talking like, you know, uh, newer than Deadpool? Because yeah, uh, Steve Ditko recently passed away, and I thought I read somewhere that he created her, he, or co-created her, in the, oh, ni- cool. in the 90s. Mm. Oh, well, then maybe it's 20 years old. I don't know. You're right, R.D. Squirrel Girl was created in 1991. Her first appearance was Marvel Superheroes Volume 2, Number 8, created by Will Murray and Steve Ditko. Thank you, Wikipedia. Oh, gosh. I don't know either. The 90s were over 20 years I... ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they were. The end of the 90s. I'm old. Was 20 years ago. No, you just think you're old. Uh, and then they had some Saturday reveals that were... The second day set of reveals. So we have Hercules, Professor X, and Hover Chair, which is also part of that rider thing that Deadpool was with. Black Cat, Red Goblin, Silver Sable. I had a friend who had a Silver Sable. It was a crappy car. <laughs> the heck is a Red Symbiote's... Goblin? Well, it's the inverse of the Green Goblin. Duh. Okay. Um, is Red Goblin Red Goblin some connection to Green Goblin, right? I have no idea. I don't. Okay. E- I don't even see anything <laughs> that looks like a Red Goblin. Uh, symbiote Spider Man, Kingpin, Build a Figure, Blink. Apparently, uh, uh, Blink's excited some people. I've seen some people tweeting about that. Uh, oh, Gambit. oh, it's a Carnage Goblin. Interesting. Oh, okay. That That's the stuff of nightmares. Hmm. In case you couldn't hear, Drew did just say Gambit. That's super exciting. Uh, Skullbuster? Scary. Is that like Skull Country? Huh? Yeah, them? Skullbuster? I feel like it, that's the guy with the... the... Is that the guy with the skull face, maybe? No, that's Bobby. Oh, that's Bobby. His name is just Bobby. <laughs> oh. Oh. I'm, I'm back. Yeah. yeah. So, Days of Futures Past Sentinel, Sentinel and Wolverine Pack, AIM 2 Pack, Luke Cage and Claire Temple 2 Pack. I'm pretty sure I saw that one. She's got some kind of claws on her. Right. From, from Iron Fist, I presume. I forget if it was Iron Fist or Defenders, but I think it was Iron Fist. It might be a little bit of both. I'm unsure. She probably used them in both, yeah. Ultron. That's uh, Marvel Studios' 10th anniversary 
Ultron. It's from the MCU. It's a repaint of the old Build-A-Figure for Ultron from an old Ant-Man wave. Uh, it's been given a really nice shiny metallic paint and I believe it has a new head on it too that is also up for pre-order on BBTS, Entertainment Earth, etc. Then they have some tenure figures. Archangel, apparently the original Archangel from a little while back, like one, a previous one, is yes. like really, really hard to get now. Really? I have that one. I see something with wings. Yeah. I am getting that. That would be Archangel. Okay. Yeah, I pre-ordered Archangel. I also pre-ordered that RD, even though I have the original two. The original has a more metallic paint job. This one has a more pastel, brighter paint job on it. But the wings are a bit more metallic looking, which is cool. They might look cool on the old one. This new one is a special pack. It has a bonus claw piece for the Build-A-Figure Apocalypse. Then it has four faces. The original, the death face mask that he wore when he was one of Apocalypse's horsemen. Then it has his unmasked face with his hair and kind of a smile. Then it has a same face basically, but a more sinister looking smile with black circles around his eyes. So pretty cool pack right there. And it's for pre-order right now from BBTS and the like. It's not the Archangel that I'm familiar with. The Archangel I'm familiar no, with that is just like a... Is named Gabriel. Oh, what? No, no, I was going for like the actual X-Men character <laughs> of Archangel, but yes. Uh, oh. I, the, the only appearance of Archangel I'm familiar with is just like a, a college boy with wings. No, he was just... A, oh! He was... Uh, that's the original Angel. Okay. That's the one that MacGyver played in, on the movies, right? I don't right? know. MacGyver. I haven't seen those movies no. in a yeah, long I think time. The actor, I think the actor for the Angel guy is the same dude, but that may be the new actor for the no, Angel No, it's... Uh, it's Ben... Whatever. Frank Hauser? <laughs> oh, okay. Ben I get confused. The, the, the actor for MacGyver is one of the X-Men, and I thought he was the angel. Oh, uh, he's Havoc. Oh, Havoc. Okay. Wow. You see how up-to-date I am and on my X-Men And he's dead. Movies. He's dead! Spoilers! Well, he's got more time spoilers to do MacGyver. For... Okay, we need to put it at the, be at the very beginning of the show. Spoiler <laughs> warning for whatever <laughs> X-Men movie Havoc dies in. For a three-year-old movie. <laughs> for... <laughs> Magic? Jenis Vell, aka Legacy, Captain Marvel, Photon, son of Marvel turned villain on display in Cree outfit, but not mentioned in panel. Okay. Um, who? Okay, who's the Marvel. blonde? Who's the blonde? Yeah, I thought that was um long shot for a second. Turns out it's a girl. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Well, it was a long shot that it was long shot, so yes. well played. Oh, uh, it's magic. Oh, magic. Yes, yeah. that was mentioned. I just, I think I skipped, I think I am moved over that. Sorry. Okay. No, no, no worries. I'm not that great at being host, so. No, uh, I mean, you're, you're reading and I'm like, uh, you know, lingering on the pictures. So then it says, Vintage Legends? Black Panther, Hawkeye, Scarlet Spider, and Vision. Why are they vintage? I'm clicking the link. Hang on. Uh, the Vision and Hawkeye, and the, they, the, they look like comic versions as opposed to movie yes. versions. There you go. Oh. Like it's Hawkeye in his stupid purple jumpsuit thing. Oh, he's got, yeah, okay. Here we go. Oh, and they're in that vintage packaging too, okay. Oh, Vision comes with a, a with an Ultron head, like like with like a decapitated head of Ultron, not like <laughs> not like he has Voltron's head on his neck. Um, can can you switch out heads with him? I mean, maybe, but I don't. Probably is that a thing? I don't know. I, I, don't, I, was... I don't. I don't think it is. But this says, this shows the helmet, so let's see. This talks about the helmets here in a second, so... Captain... No, these are teasers. Okay, sorry. Oh my gosh, confused. the Hawkeye packaging calls out that it includes a bow and quiver. It's like, <laughs> yes, it includes the one thing that makes him more than just a dude. <laughs> I feel bad for him and... Uh, 
Green Arrow at times. Because <laughs> really, that's all they do. Okay, so are the, is it just me or are some of these names getting worse and worse? Strong Guy. What? Strong oh. Guy speculated his next build a figure. Uh, he was an X Factor. Okay. Uh, X Fact, like uh, the Simon Cowell singing show? Are, are yeah. we sure that's oh. his actual name? That's not just like Andrew leaving us notes of like, oh, no, I forget that's, what his name is, that's but he's his, a strong guy. That's his name. Okay. Yeah, he was in the new X Factor, which. Uh, oh yeah, did we mention was... Andrew's not with us tonight? He is. He <laughs> yeah. he he is the sick. He does not feel well. No. Only 19 plus minutes in the show. They mentioned that. Thanks, guys. I had a migraine that knocked me out, but I'm good now. I want. I just want to ask who the anonymous manatee is, but then they won't be anonymous, wait, so I'm wait. gonna leave it alone. <laughs> I guess I'm the anonymous manatee because I'm seeing an anonymous <laughs> shrew and an anonymous crow. <laughs> Sorry, we're talking about editing the Google Doc we're looking at, and it keeps popping up while I'm trying to read this. It says anonymous manatee. Barbara manatee. <laughs> okay, so what is the rest of the MCU Black Order that people are wanting oh, that... and they will be rewarded oh, hey, with? Oh, 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 a Marvel thing that I know. Uh, that's th Those oh. are Thanos' children, right? Or like the, not his children children, but they call in the movie they call themselves the children of Thanos. But in the comics, oh, I think okay. they're called the Black Order. Like, like uh, what are their names like? Silly things like Proxima Midnight and and yeah, yes, okay. I, I I saw that movie. I know that. Okay, cool. Well, I mean, you wouldn't know their names from seeing the movie because nobody gets name dropped. No, but I, I I knew the okay, yeah, true. But I saw a lot of I actually like saw the name Proxima Midnight somewhere and then went and looked and see what that was and it's in the movie. So I knew Proxima Midnight was in the movie somehow. She's the she's the lady with the horns, I think. The really big horns. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Which one is? And then there's the guy. Which that, one is Squidward? Squidward's the one that I was about to mention. He's the guy. He looks kind of like the. Um, he looks kind of like the gentleman. Yeah, but what's his actual or name? The silence from. Oh. Is he is he Cull Obsidian? Because that's a cool name. I like that name. Maybe because I also They're, like... They the... all have like a black-based name, right? Like Obsidian, Midnight. Ah, I don't know. Okay. Those are the only two names I know. Okay, cool. The Black Order consists of Corvus Glaive, Proxima Midnight, Cull Obsidian. That's the big guy. Uh, Proxima is the female. Corvus Glaive is her brother. And Ebony Ma, he's the one who talks a lot and probably is the one you think looks like Squidward. SpongeBob? This is Squidward. Have you seen Avengers Infinity War? You need to see Avengers Infinity War. It's really good. Now I'm gonna go make some Krabby Patties. So is anything in here something else that you'd want to comment on? Is there anything in here that made you get all happy? I mean, I'm still baffled that there is a squirrel pool <laughs> well, that that little de that little Vespa with the Deadpool on it's kind of cool. It might really look good on my shelf, so I may have to get that guy. That's pretty neat. Uh, Cull Obsidian's oh. the big, strong, strong guy. Okay, is <laughs> is he, the 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 massive Bruiser one? Bruiser. There were some slides during the Marvel Legends panel at SDCC that uh, teased some figures upcoming in 2019. So there was a helmet shown for a 90s style Magneto. That's pretty cool. Uh, a shield was shown that resembles a uh, 2017 Steve Rogers Captain America. The skull belt was shown, which is for Miss Mystique. That's pretty cool. A uh, camera that goes on the head of Arnim Zola was shown. So getting a new one of him would be cool to see. And a head that really looks like Quicksilver was shown. They also polled the audience to see if they want a Storm done in a silver outfit, her 90s white outfit, or if they like the black one that was released. But, uh, come on. Everyone wants her white outfit from the 90s cartoon or 90s comic books, so hopefully they will make that. Also, Forge was mentioned, and it seems like for this next X-Men wave, 
Strong Guy was speculated to be the next build a figure. Uh, Forge and Strong Guy will probably, if they're made, they will come in their X Factor outfit to match the Multiple Man that was just released. More reveals will be coming from six upcoming conventions, so we'll keep you apprised of any cool reveals that are coming. All right, so moving on to Star Wars The Black Series. Um, I'm going to admit that I'm probably going to be a little bit lost here. I, I do know who Chopper and Ezra are from Rebels, because hey. I did watch a good bit of Rebels. Um, Kronos. I don't know. Rio Durant. I know who Captain Phasma is. Woo. Woo -woo. And then there's a Imperial Patrol Trooper. General Veers. It says Walgreens, question mark, question mark. So maybe that's Walgreens exclusive. Oh, I like that battle damage Phasma. It's like got, it's not just like some silly battle damage toy. It's like actually replicating something from the film, like with where her mask gets like blown open and you could see her eye before she spoiler dies <laughs> i think everybody knows that by now too okay chronos appears to be almost like a jar jar in a sand trooper mask or excuse me uh sand per sand people mask almost i don't i don't know what Say that what thing is but it looks kind of jar jar -y in there well, there's two links, so I'm a little bit... I'm on the... Open link. I'm on the first one. Okay. That's the one with the Empire Gross. Leia at the top? Mm-hmm. Yes. Which looks really good. Yeah, that really looks like her. It's a good likeness. Kronos. Sorry, y'all. My, my browser's being really slow... Oh, oh yeah, that's definitely like sand people outfits. Yeah, the the Kronos and like the that, that, Enfys guys look. They put me in mind of the or like original like old ass movie where they're rolling around on that orange boat in the desert and seeing people. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I love the way you, you boiled tell that. <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> I was little when I saw that, and uh, I haven't been that, you know, I've seen all those movies, but like once. Wait. Uh, well, so... you are talking about the Star Wars movies, right? Yeah, A yeah. New Hope. I've seen all those movies like once, and with the original three, it was like 30 years ago. Wow. So. That's sad, Drew. Oh my gosh, they, they got Porgs. They, they got a box set with three with two Porgs in it. <laughs> oh, is one of them already cooked? Uh, no, it's it's. Oh, it's... that was sad oh, too. Oh, one of them, one of them is the actual. I think that's the actual one that watches Chewbacca eat the other one because it's like his head is, <laughs> his head is tilted. He's, he's like all sad face, <laughs> glossy <beautiful>. eyed. <laughs> <laughs> Archive apparently is some re-releases. Which is good. A lot of people will probably like that. Oh, Ezra looks interesting. It might be the lighting, but he it looks like they've taken the animation model and made it look like an actual human face as opposed to like a stylized cartoon face. So it's um, G.I. Joe Renegades. Sure. Where the, where the toy line looks like... Toy line's been made to match the rest of the toy line even though the cartoon didn't look like the toys. Ah, okay. Uh. Yeah, yeah, it definitely looks like they humanized him. That's very interesting. That sounds cool, actually. His, his, they, they have his, uh, his helmet, though, and that just looks straight out of the cartoon. And I guess this next link is this next batch of stuff. So instead of just reading the stuff on this one, I'm going to kind of roll through it, like, with pictures. They got this little forearm dude. There's a there's a Luke. <laughs> there's this little forearm dude. I love it. Uh, I, I'm still seeing Ezra, and I saw a picture of Holdo. I see a Boba. I, I do see the Holdo. I see like the Holdo the regal a... Jar Jar looking thing. 
better known in my world is Dr. Ellie Sattler. Sure. Wait. Oh, is she the... Yes. She Okay, it's the same actress from Jurassic Park. I never noticed. Yep. Yep. Oh, somebody had to show me, so... Ooh, there's the fly. What? What do you mean, the fly? The little guy with, like, four freaking oh. arms. Oh, the farm dude. Right. Black uh, series. I thought it was Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> While we're on the subject of, uh, of Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. <laughs> my action figures, uh, find a way. <laughs> I love how they're... Do they... Do these figures all come with the little clear plastic surfboards? Or is that just how they're displaying them? That's how they're displaying okay. them. Okay. You can buy those little clear plastic surfboards. Like Sorry, sorry. Not similar hoverboards. Can, That's what I meant to say. You can buy little you can buy little stands like that for figures. I, I haven't actually seen like that and they look like they might be glued to them. Yeah, it does look like that. But you can buy things with peg holes like that to put your figures on. Oh, there's it's, okay. it's uh, there's IG88 and and what is it? B Bosch? Is that his name? The reptilian one? Marty, help me out here. Yes. <laughs> okay. They mean Bosk. <laughs> uh, wait, IG88 is a... Uh... That's the assassin droid the... one. Yeah, the skinny one, right? Yes. Oh, and... yeah, okay. And who who is the R unit that's flying? Chopper. Chopper? That's Chopper. Oh, I, I never watched Rebels. Yeah, Chopper is... Um, yeah, he's a little... What's the... Uh, he's a little butt munch. He's kind <laughs> of like a... He's kind of like a little jerk. Is, is, like him. is his, uh, his... His number is like... C-10-1-P-R or something like that. So they call him Chopper. <laughs> Okay. Literally, I, I don't think the the sh the show ever actually tells you what his number is, but it's it's like on him. It's it's available online, like it's publicly he, known. He kind of looks like kind of looks like a Keurig coffee machine. <laughs> There's he's he's in Rogue One actually. You, you, he's he he uh, walks across the screen, rolls across the screen, uh, at at the rebel base. Oh neat. And it's like explicitly supposed to be him. They make reference to it because they they actually made a prop to, of him to use in Rogue One, and and the Lucasfilm does little uh, in in the Lucasfilm office videos where where uh, some of their marketing people just talk about each individual episode of Rebels, and Chopper makes an appearance in those. They're really fun little oh, YouTube the, videos. He's in the featurettes. Hmm? The, the feature ads. Yep. Yeah. So, cool what stuff. have I missed here? What's important here? I, I think Leia, Bespin Leia is important. And the Porgs. The Bespin Porgs Han are very important, is, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> the Porgs are very important. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Oh. All right, so I was gonna make that joke, but I saved it for you. I want I want to go to a convention and see those porgs being used as currency. People just people just care out. I've, I've got a I've got an MP10 mint in box. That'll be seventy three porgs. <laughs> well, they are tasty. So just ask Chewbacca. So I think that the last big note here is the. <laughs> The prequels turn 20 <laughs> next year. Do that. So we will be getting products related to those. Hmm. Uh, and yeah. Andrew's note here says, General Grievous, please. Ooh. Will please. they Will they be wooden and act poorly? Oh. Ouch. What? <laughs> what happened? Damn. <laughs> you just dropped that mic we were talking about earlier. Don't drop the mic. The sound people For will sure. kill you. Yeah. <laughs> And oh, what does Hayden Christensen think about Figure Nights Theater? I hate them all! <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now we're all into something we all know an equal, well, maybe not an equal, but we all know a good bit more about. Uh, Transformers Bumblebee Toy Slash Studio Series Reveals. 
So we've got a deluxe two-pack Bumblebee then and now, a new deluxe Bumblebee the movie toy pack with the last night wave three deluxe Bumblebee. Bumblebee, and this is the SDC exclusive, right? The next thing, Bumblebee Volume 2 Retro Rock Garage. That's two more dino cassettes and a Beetle Alt Mode Deluxe Shiny Gold. So, Entertainment Earth will be one of the sellers of it. Amazon, perhaps. Mm. Okay. What do we think of the Bumblebee uh, Deluxe? Uh, I mean, as, is that, as for the... Is that a prototype? Hmm? Is that a prototype? <laughs> I think a lot of the stuff from Hasbro there was hand painted. Okay. I hope he does get a little bit more in the way of paint. But at the same time, like I'm looking at it and I think that's just the actual character design is honestly just kind of that yellow. Like especially look at his it, upper torso and his arms, like it's not that it's unpainted, it's that those are all car parts. Mm-hmm. Which is different for um, these movies. Yeah, the, is, he's sure. a lot more solid. kind of want to put the inside car parts on the outside in these movies instead of the outside car parts. So. Uh, maybe if the windows were tinted. Uh, yeah, I, th I think the biggest chunk of yellow is just all the... He does look like he has something of a, a vehicle backpack on him that might be due to mistransformation. Mm -hmm. Uh, who knows? But like, what a lot of the yellow that we're seeing is like the insides of car panels on his back. Apparently, the gold version that's in the SDC kit there in the pictures is transformed a little better. Oh, I Somebody see. Somebody pointed that out to me. I see that. Yeah, that does look a lot cleaner. Like the like back. There's is, a mistransformation, and the back is a lot nicer. It's not exactly right. But I like the uh, the little battle effects pretty well, like on the regular version. The... Yeah, there is a little bit of wear and tear on him. Yeah, there's some some rust and whatever. Yeah, I mean it looks a lot better than the two thousand the two thousand seven figure of the the old the old Camaro version where they just kind of like did some black airbrush spots on him. That kind of yeah. look You're like right. someone just kind of put a black spot on him. <laughs> I think the only 2007 mold I ever had in my hand was the new Camaro. That because it came in the three pack. That's a good one. That that was with the classic. That one still holds up really well today. It was a pretty good. It was a pretty good mold. I think the um, next one was was a little better. They did some improvements on it. Okay. A, a little bit, yeah. Uh, I remember, though, those figures were kind of hard to resist, even if you weren't a fan of the film back then, because they were pretty, pretty detailed. Yeah. Kind of like, kind of like this new Studio Series stuff is. I mean, I look at the Studio Series stuff in the store, and honestly, I'm a little bit jealous that the movie fans are getting that, considering what Generations has kind of looked like the last couple of years um, i would have that experience know, kind of... if i ever saw studio series figures in stores oh wow i've seen a ratchet and i've seen a crowbar i think that is it wow wow i've seen the stinger and the the old bumblebee and the crowbar yep. and and universal studios when we went down there a few months ago had um, a couple of the leaders but they were like a hundred bucks they were like <laughs> 80 something something yeah, but everything's double in Universal Studios. Mm. Uh, Revenge, let's see. Yeah, and here's the Studio Series stuff. Revenge of the Fallen, Voyager, Starscream, Voyager, Ironhide, Deluxe, Shadow Raider. That's the uh, that's the Tyrese Lamborghini. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't get that at all. Whoa, that's cool. I had not seen that they had like a big, apparently life-size Bumblebee statue. From the from the yes. new movie, that's cute, and it looks it looks better than the toy, way better. Yeah, I. Oh I, yeah, the the toy didn't nail it, no. But the toy comes pretty close. Like the, it's interesting that they went for a battle mask on the toy, 
as opposed to his regular face. I dislike that choice. I hope a regular face version comes out. And I no, well, he's got to he's got to keep it covered. He just had it chrome. <laughs> I feel like the the biggest issue that they have is the feet. Like the looking at looking at the statue, like the way his legs and feet are designed. There's no way that's not gonna mm -hmm. look dumb in in like a six inch toy. Right. You just can't get that exact look right at that scale. There's too much going on in that it's it's very simple but they're very stocky he i don't know i bet unique toys could do oh it. i'm sure unique toys could but like hasbro's <laughs> not going to spend that money on something like that they're just gonna go with the nike look that he has he looks like he's wearing nikes <laughs> which like, again the design kind of does look like that but it's just not quite there right because he's kind of a little kid bumblebee Makes sense. What's what's with the jacket? What is that? It's just some kind of a like merch. Hmm. Let's see. Of course, there's not any like. Yeah, nothing. Nothing's talking about, about it in here. I want. <clears throat> I was gonna say maybe that's something that that uh, Haley Steinfeld wore in the sh in the shoot, but it doesn't look like that because it's got like Bumblebee logos on it. It's yeah human bumblebee cosplay huh? yes i don't know that that's what I, it can you know be, what i bet i bet it's a hot it to topic product if you wear that and a pacifier in your mouth nailed it i don't get it <laughs> hot topic oh no no, no. I, I mean the because bumblebee had like the gas cap mouth oh i see uh... i see where you're going mm-hmm Oh, I thought that was like some kind of a hot topic joke. Okay, never no, mind. No, no. It went right over my went no, right it was, over my head. I, it went over everybody's head. It wasn't uh, very good or concise. No, you're not funny. <laughs> what do you? I'm going to ask Josh specifically. What do you think about two of these slots for the Studio Series being these oddly colored repaints? The you mean the 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 bright orange lockdown thing? The deluxe. Yeah, named Shadow what Raider. The who names bright neon orange dude shadow anything? Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, and what even is that representing is the other thing I have. Is that one of the KSI dr drones that I appeared in Age of Extinction? That's, that I don't I recall ever seeing? I think that's what seeing? that's supposed to be. Okay. I think that's supposed to be one of those things, though. All right. Like the blue, the blue KSI sentry, that one I recognize. And it, it only took about 20 seconds for after this was on the internet at large for me to see somebody call it tracks on Twitter. Okay. Which, the the, like, the well, blue one or the funny. orange one? The blue one. The blue one, one people were tracks. calling tracks. Okay, interesting. Yep. I, I, I do recall seeing like that was like on some concept art for something, and so that was the name TF Wiki was using for something. So maybe that's what that is. Mm. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, and then, what do you think of Dropkick, anybody? I am very confused by Dropkick in that this toy does not look like the renders, the, 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 the one shot of the character that we've seen. Like, right. at all. Like, this is a very dull... Uh, military-ish blue for the most part with these random bright blue parts and the the actual the actual shot of the character was a very clear dark bright blue if that makes sense yeah I, th I think they went for what the helicopter looks like which seems like an odd choice to me I would much right. rather see the car one. Maybe maybe it's because they've got the KSI Sentry already being a bright blue car. That's very possible. So they wanted a dull blue helicopter. Um, I don't know. And may, Or maybe in the film, Dropkick spends more time as a helicopter than as a car. But to me, that seems odd because I feel like... I get the feeling that this is going to be something of a chase movie... So them all being cars mm -hmm. most of the time, I feel like that's what we're going to be getting. And just 
the idea of these Decepticon cars is cool to me. We don't get those very often. No, we don't. Uh, and then... Well, I, I just think... I, I think this dropkick looks as much like Drift as the helicopter Drift did. So it may just be a throwaway toy choice. Oh. It reminds me a whole lot of G1 World. I don't see there, it at all, but okay. Well, it's the, it's the color. The alt and mode. The, and the basic shape of the helicopter. I... I guess I guess okay, I could see like it in the, the helicopter, tank. but I don't see it at all in the robot. Well, the chest. Yeah, I mean, and the blades on his back. You know what? I'm so used to more than meets the eye world that I don't. I keep forgetting that G1 world has that kind of cockpit chest, not like the sticky outy one. Yeah. Despite the fact that I literally have Generations world, which is basically the G1 world with G1. the IDW head and backwards knees. Optional backwards knees. Yes. I mean, if you want to super violence them to make them not backwards, sure. Man, those joints are tight on mine. But yeah, the the drop kick uh, is. Eh, I I think I I find it hard to feel anything about it without having a character to associate it with. I think that's the big thing. I think my obvious comment is too obvious, so we'll roll on. <laughs> it's to a these movie G1 figure, so you hate it. <laughs> what a what a, what's that little red plane? Oh, in the oh. in the link. Yeah, that's Cyberverse Windblade. I no, think. hang on. No, it's it's not. not. You're right. That's that's the plane that's mode for Shatter. Interesting. Interesting. But look at look at the the robot mode. That's clearly a car chest. Oh yeah, they've been confirmed yeah. as triple changers. It's, it's just interesting, but... like that, because there was a lot of speculation. Are they triple changers? And it just came out recently that they are, but we haven't actually seen for sure what they triple change into. Like we know shatters that red car we've seen. Yes. But we don't know what plane she turns into. That's a unique and... looking robot. And I, I still don't think we actually know from this toy because what I saw in the picture that was released from the movie, it still looks like it's got like blades hanging off of its arm. I saw that too. And my guess, especially judging by just like this little pathetic, mm -hmm. what is it, a three step changer thing? But Yeah, it's like a Titan. But, 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 do the titan toys transform yeah this well that's what they were calling it that's okay. what it said in the notes i, th I thought I mean, the titan here. toys were like literally just just a, just a statue oh, they with say, arms sorry titan change titan change okay. okay there we go they took the titan figure they, they took the titan toy concept and made it change into something wow this is funny we're talking about it and uh, cybertron just tweeted about this same toy interesting but like yep. what I'm seeing based on this toy and based on the pictures that we've seen of the of the actual character, I think the things we we see as propellers are blades, whatever you want to call them, rotors, whatever. Uh, I think those are actually her wings, and just the angle of them makes them look like rotor blades. That's possible. I mean, I expect these things are going to look pretty cool on the on the screen. Yeah, I. I when I mean, when the renders first came out, like yeah, they're movie aesthetic, but they're a lot cleaner than anything we've gotten before. She looks like a GoBot. That <laughs> toy does. <laughs> that toy. Hey now, watch it. Hey now. No, you know, I, I easy, like GoBot. Easy on the GoBots. I, I I am not a GoBot hater. <laughs> oh, I interesting. The packaging art makes her pink. I wonder if that's... Uh, the toy's kind of pinkish. No, like, look at the, the actual render... photos of her in the package. The figure is very clearly a, a pretty vibrant red, and the photo or render of her on the box is very clearly a hot pink. Yeah. That's true. Unless it's just a camera weirdness, which is possible. No, I don't... 
I don't I don't think it is. I, I think you're you've called it directly there. They've made this toy red. Yeah, they they do a lot of cheating in the transformation too, because that is a that card chest. Yeah, it's just slapped on it. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, the the toy just doesn't turn into a car at all. It doesn't. The the one we're looking at doesn't. It's 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 just a, a okay seven steps. It's <laughs> a it's a stick figure that lies yeah. down and sticks its arms out. That's what we're looking at. Yeah, this is not the main line figure. This is like for this is the one for the four year olds. Gotcha. Which is fine. Like, for what it is, actually, that's a pretty darn good toy for a four-year-old. Since we've spoken of GoBots, real quick, that other little SDCC announcement, if you saw it, IDW's doing a GoBot series. I've, I've heard. Oh, yeah? I do not care. <laughs> yeah, some of us older guys in the room might Tom Scioli clearly that. cares enough that he is the entire creative team. What? Well, and... And I think I think that's because nobody else wanted to touch it, and he wanted there to be a GoBots comic. I feel so. like he literally said, "Hey IDW, if I write, draw, color, and letter, <laughs> you a know what? Bless comic, his heart, man. Will you publish it?" <laughs> and they said, "All right, sure. Why not?" Tom Scioli, Bless his heart. You are the man. <laughs> Go for it. No, I actually like as much as I don't care about the book. I really applaud the man for doing the entire dang thing himself. That's impressive. I agree. Yep. All right, so Walmart G1 reissues. Is anybody, like, super pumped for these G1 toys in Walmart? Uh, I have them all, man. I don't know that I'm super pumped, but I think it's really cool that that's happening. Yeah, it's kind of a neat thing. Yep. Um, I kind of gave up on G1 several years back just because well it's just so freaking cost restricted Mm. you can buy masterpiece mp cheaper (laughs) sometimes like third party and masterpiece all the (laughs) way (laughs) and save some money i might actually like particularly the the uh the bumblebee i might get just to have a g1 bumblebee I feel like that's right. worth it, because that's just yeah, such a kind of such an important toy historically. I know, I know, it sounds to silly to say that, but to you, it's this nice little piece of history. No, I yeah, totally get it. a lot of a lot of people like grew up with that, and that was the toy they played with as a kid. To me, that's like owning. I don't know a. A vin like it's like owning a piece of the first computer ever made, or owning a '60s Camaro, or that. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay, so that's our Walmart G1 reissues. Let me read them out loud so that I can say we um, talked about them fully. Construct Con gift set, Starscream, Hot Rod, Bumblebee, Tailgate, Swerve, and Outback. Okay, I, hang on. Yeah. I have more to say. I actually. I missed the full thing. I thought it was like I I thought it was just Bumblebee, Tailgate, and Swerve and Outback. I thought it was just the mini bots. Oh no! Well, the Hot Rod's been news for a while. I, I knew Hot Rod was getting a reissue, but I don't know. My brain didn't put it in the same category. Didn't... Right. Because I th- what have prices been announced for these things yet? Well, I don't know, but I think Starscream was. Is- Buying a Starscream at Walmart's probably cheaper than getting a couple of fists and missiles for the one I have. Oh here. yeah. <laughs> so what I'm actually interested in, I feel like probably the the mini bots will be like maybe fifteen dollars. Like that seems high, but that also seems like what they would charge for it. Yeah, that's really high. Ten to fifteen dollars. Yeah. I, again, compared to trying to hunt down a vintage one. That's a great price. Uh, I say I say it should be seven ninety nine. I, I I would think that is a fair price for the physical product itself. If you just if you don't think about what it is historically and 
and think, all that. I think that's what I paid for them uh, when they released the keychains at party stores. Mm. The mini butts as keychains. Well, I think these are the same mini butts as keychains. Probably without the keychain part, though. Mm-hmm. Though I don't know. I kind of. I, I almost would rather it be a keychain. <laughs> The, the Constructicon gift set, though, that actually really intrigues me. I know the original Devastator was very small compared to what we see as a combiner. Like, weren't weren't the vehicles basically all minibots? They were or slightly larger than minibots? A little bigger. They were a little bigger than a minibot, but they'd probably scale pretty good with your Hot Wheels car. Mm. So they're like, each one was maybe a little bit smaller than your average Scout nowadays? No, they were bigger than bigger that. Bigger than scouts. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, they're not not quite deluxes, but yeah. How how big was Devastator? What, eight inches? Six inches? Eight inches? Eight inches. Mm. Ten, maybe? That puts them what, around like small Voyager or large deluxe? I don't think yes. Yeah, Voyagers. Voyagers probably about Yeah, accurate. that's actually bigger than I imagined him being. Like, that's something I'd be interested in, depending on the price. Like, I might pay 40 or $50 for, for a reissue of, of, the, of the G1 Devastator. I, I was just thinking, my Devastator's bigger than that, and then I remembered I have those uh, crazy Devi legs on them. Mm. Uh, does that make him more poseable? Uh, yeah, allegedly. He doesn't fall apart, <laughs> <laughs> which he does. Sorry, sorry. This is All this right. is a G one figure, Drew. The question is, does that make him poseable? Right, not right. more poseable. <laughs> <laughs> that was back yeah, when we'll... back when the toy really the gimmick really was that transforms. Yes, it was. It would have been more poseable if you just like glued him onto some cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> Because then you can hold them straight up or upside down. <laughs> yeah. All right. So here's the 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 thing I think's been getting the most talk. Generation Siege War for Cybertron Part One. I think we've probably at this point all seen it. So let's just talk about it. Leader class Ultra Magnus White Prime Voyager that combines with armor transforms into truck and trailer. R.I.D. Original R.I.D. homage. Right. And that's... Like, we saw the Optimus renders initially. And then... Yes. And then we started seeing the, the pictures of the Ultra Magnus. The the Optimus, to me, is so boring. It, it's just another G1-like Optimus. Why? There are, like, yeah. 12 yeah. of those... Like, literally five or six of them in the past three years because they have to have one every year now. yeah and okay i actually understand why like it's a it's a trademark thing they need to keep the they they need to keep one they, they basically need to keep cur releasing current toys to be able to keep a hold of the name and i get that i understand it i accept that but can we not do the same design every time, just slightly different? Um, and I agree. Uh, they need to do something. I mean, even the ones they did for that R.I.D. cartoon are still basically the same thing yeah. again. Um, like, I, I well, miss the days of the Unicron trilogy up until the movies where, you know, you get a new Optimus Prime every couple of years. Li like, literally every couple of years. But every couple of years, it would be a completely different design. Not just different takes on the G1 aesthetic, but like Armada Optimus Prime, Energon Optimus Prime, Cybertron Optimus Prime. They all look distinct and completely different design aesthetics. Like they all took from G1 because that's what Optimus looks like. But I know why they're doing it this time. It's because it's the 35th anniversary. I don't know why they did it the last two times before that. Knowing that we were going here now. I'd like to see Optimus done with like circles and ovals instead of like squares and rectangles. <laughs> well, I think that would sir. be interesting. 
Let let me perhaps introduce. Uh, inter might I interest you in? I don't know words. My look at Galaxy Convoy. <laughs> Instead of the, uh, uh you, you know what that one looks like, right? Galaxy, Galaxy Force? Yeah, Galaxy yeah. Force, Cybertron. Oh, yeah. That's actually yeah, my, I have that guy. that's genuinely my favorite Optimus Prime design, actually, just because of how much it deviates from the G1 while still being extremely G1 looking. Yeah, it's, it's a great toy. I love, I love the, the one change the in the Optimus shape of the window chest. Optimized the 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 way that trans it doesn't have the same old transformation and i and this is this thing is a miniature mp10 yeah in robot mode i mean it's pretty much straight up but like i say anniversary line i get it you know they want they want these to look like the the og guys mm -hmm. for at least this one year and hopefully they, you know, deviate a little from that in the next ones. Uh, the big thing for me was that de everything that's deluxe and up has freaking feet with tilt. Yes. It's like, wow. That is that mm -hmm. is definitely something to talk about. It does look like Hasbro is really trying with this line in particular to give us a standard. Like everything, yeah. pretty much everything has ankle tilts. Uh, there's there appears to be an intention to do a lot more with paint than they've done in the pa in recent years. Uh, I've seen people commenting on there's a lot less hollowness. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a Studio Series sized price point. Yes. The MSRP is now nineteen ninety nine, and I think that's the effect yeah. of what they're trying to do with it now. I agree. And that's something I've actually been asking for for years. Yeah. It's like, if you'll give me more posability and more paint and less hollowness and maybe a little more variance in the engineering, let's say, let's go back to like 2007 standards. Yes, <laughs> please. And give me 2007 style robots today. I'll pay more. Yeah. Like, I think what Hasbro has been trying to do for the past half a decade or more has been to keep the prices that we're used to and decrease the quality mm -hmm. to be able to keep up with those prices. And I think nowadays, especially with the rise of third party, collectors are much more willing to pay more for the quality that we're used to. Yeah, I think Hasbro's watching and they're taking notes. I agree. And that's good. And the, I like that, the, that Hasbro is, is learning from this. Well, the last time I was this excited for the main line was the last anniversary, mm. the Thrilling 30 stuff. Yes. So I'm happy to see that kind of return. Uh, I definitely want the range of these deluxes. I mean, I've already got an, a mini MP10. I have the MP10V. I don't see me needing that guy again unless I just happen across him and want to spend some money that day. Oh yeah, this, this but, I actually genuinely hate this Optimus. I think they just completely failed him. I just think the design think, looks too wonky to me. They're they're trying too hard to hit the G1 look while also hitting the evergreen look with those stupid arms that are on the evergreen design that I hate with a fiery passion. I get it, it's the G1 toy arms, but no right no optimus ever had that <laughs> except for that one toy <laughs> and it's bled into the comics now and i don't like it i hate those arms <laughs> oh we're gonna see a lot more of like these toys bleeding into the comics oh yeah i mean i i'm i heavily suspect that idw comics after this continuity ends will be this like this is the story they're gonna tell we're either going to get war for cybertron comics or going to get war for cybertron machinima cartoons or both or both i think both is quite likely and okay if the comics tell stories that i that are just as well written as the ones we've been getting i'm all for it I wish well, they, they would look different. 
they can't. Yeah, they... They they just can't give us stories as good as what we've been getting because James Roberts and Nick Roche, neither one are coming back. It just kind of depends on who takes over the mantle, to be honest. Well, okay, but from my point of view, to be honest, I've never liked a comic book before. I read that first comic book I read by Nick Roche and James Roberts. Mm. Which would be the um, the Wreckers. Right. Like, I really just didn't... I couldn't get into comics. The stories are too... I'm not going to say the stories are too basic. How, how? What's a better way to put that? The stories are... Some Somehow, Roberts and Roche both had this way of making you feel like you just watched a really cool movie or TV show. Yes. And... I never really got that before from a comic. And I hadn't tried a whole bunch of comics really either. But throughout my life, I had picked up, you know, a Transformers G.I. Joe here, a Spider-Man here, and just never, never found a comic book series that grabbed me like more than meets the eye did. I just, I don't see the, the you know, and I'm not saying the stories are going to be bad, but I just can't see them hitting them more than meets the eye yeah they they're going to have the it's the impossible act to follow essentially i think yeah everyone's afraid of what's going to come after current idw because everyone's basically accepted that there's no possible way it's going to be as good and or that's we, a that's a bad place be, to be we could be surprised i guess but and I've, you know, kind of turned over this leaf of trying to be hopeful. Yeah. You know, after after seeing the, um, after seeing the, you know, this first fall of war for who's it of Cybertron reveal, and then realizing that it's the 35th anniversary, and you know, I need if I want this to be around for a 50th, I kind of need to get on board with a couple of things, I guess. Yeah, you know, if everybody falls off, they won't make it anymore. So, let's 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 uh, talk about some of some of the other figures. Like, what yes, do you, what are your thoughts <laughs> on their Ironhide? Ironhide may be my least favorite of this bunch. Really? Um, that is interesting but, to me. Are these the hand painted I'm, ones? Yeah, yes. absolutely. That's why they look so weird yeah because ultra magnus needs a wash <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i think first of all ironhide turns into like a, a, a minivan thing and i've just never really been into that like i think ironhide's an okay character but i just uh, but i'd say it's probably the best deluxe ironhide we've ever got yeah which isn't which isn't saying much uh, Hound looks awesome. Uh, the Chromia is way improved from those um, combiner versions. Uh, and of course, I'm going to love Sideswipe. You could put him in a freaking Mexican hat, and I'm still going to love Sideswipe. Sideswipe is my it's... least favorite. <laughs> is well, that's it... because you don't care about Sideswipe. No, actually, it's cruel? because it's just G1 Sideswipe. <laughs> my issue uh, with it is this Ironhide. is supposed to... Mm -hmm. What? Is that Chromia with, with Ironhide? Ah. Uh, yes. Okay. The blue yeah, the, one? The, the blue Moon Racer. Like, this is just a, yeah. a rehash of the Moon Racer mold that we got recently. Uh -huh. And I actually like this a little better. Uh, yeah, the, the yeah. car parts fold away from her leg, and uh, she's got a little bit less stuff hanging around. I don't yeah. quite like on her back. Yeah, I don't. I don't quite like that it's Chromia because the color palette makes her look like Blur. Uh huh. Yeah. I, yeah. It kind of reminded me of that. Um, the Autobot from the Gambler. Is it, was it the Gambler? Devcon. Oh yeah, Devcon. Josh Bertram's favorite character. There you go. Hi, Josh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and that is correct. That is the Gambler. Yep. But I, I, I said it before when that toy was originally released. I really like that vehicle design because it is so alien looking. I can see that. And that's why I, I hate didn't the look... side swipe because it looks like a... Drew, what does side swipe turn into? 
Lamborghini. It looks like a Lamborghini. But okay, so here's here's my take on that. Because at first I kind of had a moment of thinking that same thing that you're thinking. But if you build a machine to do a job, it's going to have certain things about it that look a certain way. If you build a car to be aerodynamic, it's going to have a pointy nose. If you build it for good handling, you're going to put the engine in the back and it's going to have vents to get air to that engine. Uh, I feel like if you built a car on Cybertron, it's going to look a lot like you're building a car on Earth. Do you follow what I'm saying? Okay, but there's one very like, important thing that you that uh, that you've missed. They're not building a car for a person to drive. They're they're not building a car for a person to drive. But if you're taking on a form that's aerodynamic and has good handling, it's going to fall within a certain set of parameters. But why is it just like just like just like? <laughs> um, Hound, an off-road vehicle. It looks a lot like a Jeep. Not as much as the, the, the side swipe looks like a Lamborghini. Oh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong, but I, I kind of I kind of feel like, you know, there's a there's a line where you have to suspend your disbelief to well, make these figures look like the G1 characters. They have to look a little bit like the cars and vehicles they turn yeah, into. Because in the original... They look the same on Earth as they did on Cybertron. They just turned into different shit. Yeah, and it, it to make a G one ish sideswipe toy now, like that, that that thing looks really good. I I don't I don't right. dispute that. I my 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 beef with it is that it looks too much like an Earth vehicle for me to yes, it for does. me to buy it as a Cybertronian vehicle. Like that just looks very lazy to me. It honestly looks like they literally just took a Lamborghini and re made the roof also part of the windshield. Well, that's the same problem that they had with the Optimus. Oh, yeah. The Optimus it, has they, that. That's the, well, I hate the Optimus for the same reason. They kind of took the Masterpiece versions and shrunk them down here. Hmm. Because they look a lot the same as, like, the MPs. Yeah, and an Optimus's truck mode just looks like an earth truck with some lego bits stuck on it like <laughs> really painfully with some lego bits stuck on it but i'm interested in a mainline for the first time in five years so true like there are some figures in this line that i might actually buy and interestingly enough i think the best looking one out of all of them is ironhide and my what I love about it is that he does look alien. It doesn't resemble any Earth vehicle, and yet it still does harken to the G1 Ironhide. Yes. And it also looks like it's taking a lot of cues from War for Cybertron. Oh, golly. The original War for Cybertron design. <laughs> Confound it all, Who, Hasbro. Who's the MicroMaster fan, fan in this group? Uh, I like the MicroMasters. There's always one. You get a few Transformers fans together, and there's always somebody who has this thing for MicroMaster. Oh, no, no, I don't have a thing for them. I mean, I, I had a lot of them, mm -hmm. and I sold them all. It's like one of the few things that, that I uh, was not, like, emotionally attached to. Oh, okay. But, uh, well, then maybe, but I maybe like I'm them. the MicroMaster guy, because so I are, still have who a few are these, of them. Who are these MicroMasters? Because it just says Car Patrol, Battle Patrol, Rescue Patrol. Who are they? Uh, that's how they sold them originally. They were in four packs. Wait, so did they so have names? The race... Well, yeah. Road Handler and Swindler are the ones in the race car patrol shown here. Okay, so the, so they are they are named characters. Like I just don't see names. Yeah, um, and then the battle patrol has Flack. Whoa! Big shot. Look! Look at the rescue patrol with me for a sec. Look yeah. at the fire truck the... looking one. In vehicle mode, is it just me, or does it look like his ladder rotates, pivots up and down, and has a secondary joint to extend it? Yes, it yeah. does. This is a Minicon. Yeah. Oh, well, this is where Minicon... Minicons came from the original MicroMaster. No, 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 no. I, I'm just, like, 
Hasbro's putting that much into what is essentially a minicon figure. Yeah. Now it maybe maybe oh, okay. it doesn't maybe it doesn't actually rotate, but it certainly looks like it could. Actually, no, it has to. Look at the robot mode. Yeah, it's on the it's yeah, it's turned. So that is supremely impressive to me. Hasbro did, has not put that much effort into a figure that small in a long time. Like it, it didn't put that much effort into Combiner Wars hook. Who? Combiner Wars hook. The the, the devastator component. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I. I... <laughs> I forgot that they were in Combiner Wars. I kind of separate. You say Combiner Wars, and I think of, like, all the ones that are actually Combiner, like, Scramble City limbs. Ah. Uh, yeah, like the, the Titan class one, specifically. I've l lumped all that stuff together and discarded it by now. So have many of us. I, I kind of forgot that Devastator separates. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah. So um, did Michelle. Purpose. <laughs> Uh, but like that, <laughs> that's really interesting to me that, that Hasbro's actually sitting there and saying, Hey, do we have the budget to make it do this and this and this? And if so, then let's do that. I feel like Hasbro's yeah. actually putting in the effort to do everything they possibly can with each figure rather than their, their design, uh, philosophy before seemingly being what is the least we have to do right i agree I, I think the whole line looks like somebody really cares about this line yeah it's also the 35th anniversary so who knows what will happen in the next year because i felt that way about like the thrilling 30 brainstorm and springer and i'm like oh my god look what they're giving us and then, you know, it kind of like I, I think I think Combiner Wars gave as little as they could because they had to get that gimmick in. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they started giving more as it went along. Yeah, I think as they started doing more and more of the retools, they were able to put more and more into each retool because they had less and less that that they that they had to had to work out yeah exactly like they already have the base mold in the engineering figured out so they can afford the normal budget for figuring that out to more paint to okay well not so much more paint but to to other things right we we saw and then there were we, we saw more out of a retool than we've ever seen before to the point that they've developed a whole new terminology for it okay so out of this list of reveals is there anything you want to touch further upon? I do want to talk about COG. Okay. Because that is... I really didn't, so go ahead. <laughs> it's an interesting looking figure, and the fact that Hasbro is actually putting something into taking this, what was previously like two little chunks of plastic that came with G1 Fort Max, <laughs> and turning it into a full transforming figure looks pretty darn articulated uh yeah looks like he's got the ankle tilts too uh doesn't look like he has wrists though but it i can't quite tell if he separates but i think he does yeah he turns into all the weapons you see on the figures in the case there are they bits of cog are parts they're bits of cog Ooh. Hang on, I have I yeah, see, I'm, I'm looking just, I I'm looking at the render version. And I just don't care about all that. <laughs> I see that now, yes. Okay. Like side. I think swipes a lot of people kit it out with cog. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are really excited about that. Uh, personally, I just want I'm in the figures. I don't what I'm interested yeah. in with Cog is how he integrates into the uh, Titans Return Fortress Maximus. And more so whether he at all could possibly integrate with the G1 version because that's the one I have. And <laughs> mine doesn't mine didn't have a cog because it was the Brave Max version that didn't come with cog. Uh, I was that was the, the the sad part is that while it's prettier, it doesn't have all of the accessories that the original came with. Right. 
And so as someone who has been considering trying to find a G1 COG and realizing that I have to pay like $50 for two chunks of plastic with wheels. Yep. And zero articulation. Yeah, yep. <laughs> Like, I'm interested in, in how this would scale with him, whether he'd be able to drive into the little compartments and things. I'm thinking probably not. But well, I'm interested. He is a deluxe, so I guess that could inform your... Yeah, I, I know he's a he's a deluxe, but he'd have to be a small deluxe to fit, say, in Fort Max's feet. Yeah. But, so that's and... that's intriguing to me. And if it doesn't at all integrate with, uh, with... He can stand by him. Yeah, oh, definitely. But if he doesn't at all integrate with Titan's Return Max, even though I don't have that, I feel like that's a really big failure on Hasbro's part. Because this figure really has the potential to be an accessory for Fort Max. Yeah, that I'm definitely sense. getting him. Um, I I'm thinking he will at least be compatible with the ramps. Yeah. Because mm. uh, he looks pretty narrow. And he's pretty neat looking. Like, the, the robot mode looks really characterful. Surprisingly so. Yeah. I can't quite there's tell what his face a, is. There's also a six-gun crankcase shockwave. Could be Cyberverse or WFC. No, that's the other. Six-gun six crankcase and shockwave. I guess our war for Cybertron? Well, I haven't said anything in a while, so it's about time, right? Like how Josh is interested in getting Cog for his Fortress Maximus, even though he has a, a Brave Max, and I think RD's interested in it too, I'm more interested in seeing what Six Gun's like when he comes out, because I have a Generations Metroplex. Thank you, wife. And, uh... I figure it's going to be a retool of COG somehow, you know, maybe they'll heavily retool it so it looks more like how the original six gun looked, but that's still pretty cool. I never picked up any of the third party six guns, and I still have my G1 version of Metroplex along with six gun, so I'm curious how this will look. It's pretty cool that they're making it. I'm interested in what, what crankcase is a retool from. Or if he's his own mold. Or he's probably Hound. Yeah, I could see it being Hound. And then these could be Cyberverse or War for Cybertron, Megatron, Bumblebee, Soundwave, Jetfire, Ultra Magnus, Hot Rod, Prowl, Drift, Barricade, Thundercracker, there's Drift again, Springer, and Starscream. Hmm. So I'm sure there will be Starscream oh, yeah. in War the, for the, Cybertron. The, the, the... You can't have a line without a star scream in it. Not anymore, you can't. And then there was art with Prowl and Red Alert for this, like, drawings of them with this line. And we also know that Impactor and Mirage want to vote for this line. That's right. So you should be getting that. That should make a lot of us uh, comic book people happy. Yeah, I'd, I'd definitely be interested in an Impactor in this style. I feel like that could definitely work. It's probably going to be similar to the Ironhide. That's what I'm thinking, too. Especially considering the... Let's see... The, the, the cannon that he comes with. It's not, it's not at all Impactor's cannon, but I can easily see them... Like incorporating that into an over-the-shoulder style for impactor and switching it and out to the maybe proper even gun. retooling it a little bit yeah yeah all right so dna design studio series megatron upgrade kit i think you said you were going to wait for a, a bigger megatron before you bought an upgrade kit for it isn't that right yeah <laughs> i i'm hoping that uh that someone does an oversized knockoff of the Studio Series Megatron because I love this design. I love the the Studio Series figure from what I've seen of it, although I haven't handled it yet. Looks beautiful to me. He's just too small for for my collection. Right. Uh, if if nobody does anything with it 
in in the next few months like if i don't hear of an of an oversized version coming out i will probably pick one up just because i do want this design in a nice toy and then i would probably i would probably get this upgrade kit uh for the hand if nothing else because what it gives us is a new gun arm for some reason I'm not quite sure what the point of that is because it looks basically the same. Uh, maybe it maybe it swaps easier with the maybe other hand. maybe it maybe that's the idea is that it's easier to swap out. But nah, because look I'm just look guessing. at the look at where it actually attaches. It's a mushroom peg. It's just it's just a mushroom peg onto the onto the bicep swivel. So that's where the original one has oh. to detach. So the, it's clearly an aesthetic thing, but it's a weird aesthetic thing to me, because I don't really see much of an aesthetic difference, and I actually think I prefer the original to this one. This one, like the blade, looks a little. Are you silly. sure about that? I think his his new hand goes down in it. Oh, uh, oh, you're right. Okay. I see. Uh, all right. All right. Okay. Now I'm on board with. I see what they're doing with it. Yeah. yeah looks like it, it looks like the. Arm. So it looks like the gun arm actually attaches over the regular arm. That yeah, the but the bottom blade kind of folds out of the way, and then over the arm. That looks interesting. I'd love to see a little, a little more in depth how that, how that engineering works. But. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see in l later pictures that's definitely what's going on. So that's that's definitely got some intrigue for me then. Because previously the only thing I was really interested in it for was the option to give him a right hand. And I like that it that it gives him the, the wing bits for tank mode, if you so choose. Oh, that's what those are. Yep. Okay, I was looking at him trying to figure out what the devil was going on there. In uh, in, now, in the movie, he actually does fly in tank mode, and he just sprouts little wings. Yeah, he defies physics. <laughs> well, uh, you don't actually. I see... think Transformers in general defies physics, yes. but <laughs> you don't actually see him flying on Earth. You see him flying through space. Ah, so I mean, he still had to get off the ground, but uh -huh. it's much more believable as a space vehicle than a than an air vehicle for sure. Okay, well, and it also looks like I, those like those wing bits uh, fill in the the gaps in the sides of his torso. It just took me a minute to find them because they're similarly shaped to a lot of the other greebles. Yep, but hey, that's also kind of a plus. Yeah, no, I, yeah, exactly. It, it looks well. And it looks well. And the the, the, <laughs> pre, well. the the first production will come with uh, the damage, blown up half his head look from the end of Revenge of the Fallen, which is neat. I like the copper teeth. Yes, those <laughs> are pretty. Megatron got a grill. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like we have uh, some discussion questions, and I think we can do these fairly easily and quickly. Yeah, we we got through a lot. Or actually, we didn't yeah, have we, as much to get through this time, I feel like. I don't think we did, but I also think we were kind of glossy on the standard action figures that we might would have spent more time on if Andrew was with us tonight. Yeah. So, uh, good news is he just messaged on Messenger, and he uh, had him a nap and feels a little better, so good. good. Cool. Um would you ever sell off all or part of your collection to focus on one thing such as third party legend scale or strictly MMC slash IDW style? Artie, why don't you take this one first? Who, uh, who asked that question? I don't actually know it. How, does not tell me. How dare they? This question came from me, and it's the one that we didn't answer at the end of the TFCon episode last time. No, um... <laughs> Wait, RD, was I, this your question? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to answer that question with a question. <laughs> okay. No, no. Um, I. Oh. Well, I mean, as as this has been well documented, I have a problem. <laughs> and, 
And I have a hard time uh, letting go of any part of my collection. So mm. it's basically only grown in one direction. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which is out. Yeah. out, <laughs> Outward and upward. Um, I mean, my, my basement is pretty much overrun with, with uh, all the shit I've, I've bought over the past 20 years. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, it's cool stuff, but it's a lot. And, right. you know, I, I really do need to downsize. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell off part of my collection to, f to focus on anything specific. Uh, I, I think I would just sell it off to make room. Mm. Right. That makes good sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, I think... I think Josh has kind of already like picked a kind of a focus, haven't you? Yeah, actually, the the question came at an interesting time for me because the answer I have for that is kind of no, because I basically already did. Uh, I right. in the past in the past five ish years, I think starting starting right around when I started going to college, I started selling a lot of my older figures, and and I've focused my collection a lot more mostly what i buy now is idw styled figures and movie styled figures specifically the the movie masterpiece uh vein and the studio series stuff and i've i've only i say studio series i literally only have one it's blackout uh but i'm interested in studio series grimlock maybe in the future even though and the only thing that really holds me off is no connection with the character itself, but the figure I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of if I have $50 that I can't think of a better thing to spend it on, then I would get it, but I keep finding better things to spend it on. And there's so much out there. Yeah. And the <laughs> other... The other the, there is a third tier that my collection is going towards, and that's actually nostalgia interestingly enough uh, i keep finding myself buying uh buying old cybertron and energon figures that i really have uh, a soft spot for like i recently got uh, i recently got an energon megatron to go with my energon optimus that was my second transformer ever i recently picked up uh well not recently per se but a couple of years ago uh I think sophomore or senior year of college, I forget which. Not sophomore. Yeah, it was it was senior year of college I picked up a Galaxy Convoy because that's the optimist that I grew up with. Yeah, I'm making you guys feel old now. But uh I I got um I got Energon and Mega Supreme, I got Cybertron Metroplex, I got Cybertron Megatron. I've been getting all these Unicron trilogy figures. Specifically like the the large really good ones for that era. Because, like, those are just figures that I was never able to get in my youth because they were the expensive ones, and all I could ever get were, like, the little deluxes and the basics, scouts, whatever they were called back then, I think. So I'm, I'm, I am devoting a small aspect of my collection to picking up these nostalgia pieces, like, toys that I never, that, that I never got the chance to buy before they left the shelves and before I focused my collection towards more expensive and more intricate things. Like, there, there's no way from a figure standpoint that I would buy, for example, Cybertron Scourge. The figure is very weak, to be honest. Very poorly posed. In dragon mode, he looks nice, but in robot mode, he looks silly. But Cybertron Scourge was one of the figures I was desperate for when that show was out when I was a kid because I loved the character in the series and because I like dragons. So I, I picked that one up uh, late in high school and that's one of the figures I will never get rid of. I will never sell it. And all, all these other Cybertron ones especially, I, I, those aren't going anywhere. Those I'm sticking with because those are my that's what got me into this whole thing and they have a very special place in my heart and so seeing make toys 
especially doing their doing their Cybertron Galaxy Force Starscream was such an awesome thing for me because like that's that's my G1 and someone sitting there and making a the the high quality collector grade figure out of that design I I was completely sold on it as soon as I realized it was an actual thing that was happening. And makes sense. Get more guys do that, I will definitely devote more of my collection to that. But right now I'm trying to focus on the movie and the, the on the movie masterpiece and the IDW. And I'm starting to get a little sad because I feel like the IDW supply is going down lately. Mm-hmm. Because I think interest in it is waning away, and MMC is the only one really still at it. And right. I'm definitely all in on their DJD <laughs> when those when those continue to come out. And I'm excited about this is this is one thing that that uh, came up last week while I wasn't. Yeah, it was last week you guys recorded this uh, while I wasn't here. Uh, Planet X doing their IDW Deathsaurus and. I was extremely surprised to see, like, I saw Planet X's renders, and Andrew and I were messaging about it, and MMC hadn't revealed theirs yet. We said, oh, the MMC one will be better. And then MMC released theirs, and it's straight up G1. And I looked back at the Planet X and said, actually, I really like this one. The same exact thing happened to me. <laughs> so that's that's one that I'm very interested in. Just I, I I know I'm deviating from the the question, but uh, well, you know maybe maybe MMC is seeing hey we're hitting about to hit that 35th anniversary and maybe we're doing some G1 ish stuff because Skylinks is kind of IDW but that's kind of the IDW one's fairly G1 still, mm -hmm. so that could be something that's going on there. Yeah, I don't feel like IDW Skylinks ever got any sort of a redesign. They just went, they just used his G1 design. Yeah, they kind of flipped his shuttle wings forward and said, okay, cool. Did they? <laughs> did they do yeah, that the before original... the Combiner Wars toy did that? Oh, um, I don't know. Maybe they both did that. Oh. Um, me, no, I wouldn't. Probably not. I've got such a stupid little hodgepodge of stuff. It's kind of just like a weird... I bought this once, and I bought that once, and then I collected a bunch of Autobot Masterpiece cars, and now I'm kind of not happy with the direction that's going, and I don't know what's next. Maybe maybe the um, War for Cybertron will be my new centerpiece. I don't know. Yeah, I, I have little odds and ends here. Like, I might sell the two or three animated figures that I have because I just don't really have an affection for the animated toy line. Emphasis on toy line. The show is amazing. Uh, for whatever Agreed. for whatever reason, I think it works better in animation than it does in plastic. I think the... when No matter how well the toys realize the animation designs in plastic, which a lot of them did a very amazing job at, like, I would have thought it impossible to get as close as they did. I still think it just doesn't look right in person. Okay. I think we got that fairly well answered. I mean, the only thing I will never sell is my complete collection of alternators. So, uh, Wow. It says I did not know you had a complete set, complete collection of the yeah. alternators set, uh, series. Yeah, I had. That's what was out when I started back collecting. Mm. So I bought a couple of classics figures, and I bought actually bought a like a couple of versions of Hot Shot uh, because he was the cool car guy. Which and versions I, of like, Hot Shot? Um. Well, not the, not the Armada one because it was a little bit brick. <laughs> Fisher but Price, Ener but yeah, fish, yeah, but Energon, and um, I have the Energon one, and I have the um, you, what's the what's Cybertron. the other one? Yeah, I have the Cybertron one, and I have the Ex classic Excellium. Hot Shot. Uh, yeah, well, he's Hot Shot in American packaging, so right. 
Yeah, the Cybertron Hotshot actually is one of my favorite figures. I mean, it's okay. For for what it like for a, I I got that one when I was a kid when it was out. So like that was just such a cool toy to me. Right. It was it was one of the few Cybertron figures that turned into a genuine normal looking Earth vehicle. And yeah, sort of. I mean the <laughs> true the yes. the front part of the car looked like a real Earth car. You know, yeah. it it took liberties when you got to the back of it because of the gimmick. <laughs> but uh I don't know, just something about it really really sat very well with me as a toy. Also, he's blue. <laughs> and I kind of I kind of, you know, kind of picked up Hot Shot as I saw him cuz that was the car that was on the shelves when I mm. started back. So uh okay, so next question, in a way that our third party is now doing what Generations originally did, giving us updated versions of old characters, examples being beasts like Bull Side Swipe and Ancestrod, Cross Dimensions, etc. RD uh, I'm gonna pass for now. I want to consider okay. this. <laughs> I think Bull Sideswipe and Ancestrod are a little bit out there for generations of old. Uh, maybe Cross Dimensions is too, but I think Cross Dimensions like the closest thing third parties got to a generations line. Yeah, it is their on take their own take on the G1 characters in a new you know kind of a whole new thing its own story you know in interestingly uh, uh actually did you have more to say no you're okay. fine go ahead uh interestingly i feel like the the closest to giving us updated versions of old characters besides cross dimension which to me is just completely un unappealing because the only reason I like seeing I like seeing updated versions of old characters is when there's actually something to go with the character design. If there's no character to go with the design, there's no appeal to me. I'm like, ah, that's an interesting Galvatron design. Who is he? And unless you tell me who he is and give me a reason to care about him, I don't care about him. So I, you need media exactly like i do not collect for the physical aspects of the figures while i do have an interest in the engineering and i will always if i see a cool figure watch video reviews of it see how the engineering and all that works i'm never going to spend money on it if i don't care about who it is so that's why i don't think things like make toys cross dimension I don't feel like that's going to be a viable business model long term. I don't think those things are going to succeed without media. That's I, I think that's like a passion project kind of thing. Very much so. While MMC has separate comic books for each individual release, uh, Make Toys has not done that for Cross Dimensions. There's just one comic book and it has some of the characters in it, not all, and uh, I feel like unless they start making individual issues or more comic books in general with their cross-dimension characters, then Josh has a valid point. Uh, but the, on the only other thing I can think of that really does that was actually Fans Project with their Warbot series. Like they're, it's, it's old and it's, and it's way out of date engineering wise. But right. but like the old their old Springer their their broadside uh, I think they did they Ultra did an, Magnus Rodimus they did not do an Ultra Magnus they did Steel Core. <laughs> well, no, uh, no, the, he's uh, talking oh, about the armor. That's chat. right, the the armor set. Sorry, I was thinking you were talking about Steel Core. Right, the the no. City Commander and the and the and the Rodimus upgrade kit protector. Yeah, those. I mean, those that's things, kind of a whole different thing, though. That's like. In a lot of ways, that's like the DNA design well, no, thing like, we but, just talked about for Megatron. Yes, the with the Magnus and the Rodimus, those were upgrade yeah. kits. But I, but I'm thinking more along the lines of the Warbot series, mm -hmm. which is very short lived. There are not many figures in it. There's like four or five at most, I think. But like those well, were 
they're trying to have a comeback. Yeah, they are. And I'm curious as to what's going to happen because I wonder if there's an interest for them still. Because those were Fans Project dug out its own aesthetic to create the their own designs for these characters. Like look at look at the look at the the their Springer. It like doesn't look like any Springer we've ever had. It was doing its own take on a classic Springer, but with its own unique set of shapes. And I think I don't think most collectors are interested in something like that anymore. I feel like what we want to see is high-end versions of designs that already exist. They used to be the only game in town. Yeah. Yeah, they did. No, and and I know like nowadays a lot of people just look at fans project stuff and just kind of dismiss it cuz it's so they're they're Blocky. sticking so hard to that style that they yeah. that they set for themselves in like what 2010 at the latest yeah. yeah about that and and they're refusing to evolve from that and that's i think working to their detriment back in their day i will not i will never contest this that back when they started out they were pioneers. They were the first to try doing a full a full figure of their own design and a triple changer at that. Like what they started, they are the reason third party really exists as it does now. So good on you, France Project, for what you began, but I feel like the industry outgrew them. That sounded like a eulogy. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. And again, RD, I do you hope have an they answer now? Uh, I do have an answer. Um, I don't feel that. Uh, well, the question is: Are third parties now doing what Generations originally did? I think Generations is still doing it, and uh, mm. and they're doing it better because it's uh, readily available and more affordable. Right. Uh, now, uh, uh, now um, there are third parties that are that are filling filling gaps that uh, generations misses, and I love mm-hmm. that. You know, uh, the, uh, like the like the ape face, um, which was an obvious. It was a gimme. Like, how come uh, Hasbro did not do an ape face? Uh, they did a Titan but, Master Ape face. Yeah. yeah. That, that was like a slap in the ape face. Yeah. <laughs> You're awful. Uh, <laughs> no, but um, yeah, I, I think uh, Generations is still doing it. And third parties, uh, I mean, they're not really necessary for the most part, except for those gaps that, uh, that I mentioned. Hmm, okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't I mean, think... I, uh, sorry, you go. Well, I kind of have a different different take on Generations still be... You're still doing what Generations used to do. Because I think Generations has kind of... Stopped doing that? Forgotten. Well, yeah, I kind of yeah, I kind of think they forgot what they were doing. Yeah. Because, you know, like, the power of the Prime stuff... Like, the, the, the last five years has been full of stuff that's like, so G1 it hurts. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that's a bad... Yeah, right. But, you know, I, I kind of... I kind of preferred the... the classics to the early generations into that scale that gave us that cup, that reimagining of cup. Mm. That wasn't like... that wasn't like the space slipper truck. It was a, like, old 40s truck you know uh at like a like a new like what would happen if cut landed on earth today and he landed in some farmer's field and scanned his old pickup truck Mm -hmm. you know that's more what generations was doing at its inception and and now they've kind of sorry yeah yeah now they've kind of now they've kind of circled back around to 
uh, generations is straight up copies of the G1 stuff. And I get it. A lot of people, that's exactly what they want. I would love to see, you know, like, in a sense, the Generations Toys Jazz. You know, the one that's a modern Porsche. And that Devastator that's modern cars. That's well, kind except, of more the, except the Except the Mixmaster. <laughs> Maybe I meant Minasaur. You did say cars. Right. I, I meant Minasaur. If I said Devastator, I meant Minasaur. <laughs> okay. But, you know, I, 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 there's, there's, a, there's kind of somewhat of a gap of like, hey, this looks like a new Porsche. You know, Special Ops Jazz or whatever his name was. Mm. Oh, yeah, you know, I remember. Booger Picker Jazz. <laughs> <laughs> That, I kind of miss I kind of miss that era of generations. Yeah, and, and that's an interesting perspective because generations nowadays has shifted very much to being okay. Here's the G1 character design. Let's make a toy out of it using today's engineering. Right. And that's there's a place in that for a lot of people's in a lot of people's collections. Yeah, I mean that's what I wanted originally with um when with classics. No, see, I liked classics just the way it was. Yeah. <laughs> re, re, reimaginings. And I think, yeah, I think we're getting right now. There's such an overwhelming avalanche of G1 from all angles. Like there's the there the there's the current generations that's just doing pure G1 stuff. There's the masterpiece that's been doing pure G1 up until they started doing the Beast Wars in the movie, and it seems like they've stopped doing G1 almost entirely now, which actually I think is a bad idea. I think they do, they should still continue G1ing a little bit, because that's <laughs> what masterpiece was. Right. Not that I'm upset to see movie and Beast Wars masterpieces. I think those are amazing figures and i'm really interested in seeing more of them i'm really interested in paying about 200 dollars less for any of them but uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that megatron is 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 a hard pill to swallow <laughs> uh, I mean, he's pricey and and third party now is just all on the g1 masterpiece yeah with Every time a third party is like, we're doing a G1 so-and-so, every other third party company is, so are we! <laughs> and that's very annoying. Yeah, and, I'm to the point where I, there's so much of it that I just can't bring myself to care about much yeah, of, any it's, of it. Yeah, it's oversaturation. Mm -hmm. And I think the... There is starting to be another aspect of G1 coming out where so, there are a couple of third parties now that are doing sort of generation style G1. Uh, Open and Play did that Galvatron that was basically an upscaled Combiner Wars Galvatron with a few tweaks that really improved on that design. And uh, Like him not being a headmaster for starters. That the, That'd be the big one. Uh, I think Open and Play also did a Springer along those same lines. Like it wasn't, it wasn't uh, a rehash of a Hasbro design, but it was. It just felt like a large generation style figure, and and they've been priced accordingly. Like I think the Galvatron and the Springer were both like thirty to sixty dollars each, somewhere in that range. Oh, I didn't know they were that cheap. Yeah, I. I I think, I think cool. they were sixty. So yeah, like it was, it was uh, they're they're like almost masterpiece size, but the engineering is more, more generations uh, level. And I'm interested to see in, and we t we've talked about this previously. I'm interested in other third parties taking that, that, uh, not necessarily that design aesthetic of still going for g1 but 
taking on that hang on let's let's lower the engineering and lower the price but still deliver what's ultimately a very 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 good mainline hasbro type figure right like with uh planet x seem to be doing it with their insecticons something in between yeah and i think there's a huge market for that if they pick the right characters and design them well cool i think that kind of answers the question and then some <laughs> yeah we uh definitely use it as a springboard so good 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 all right anything else that we want to quickly comment on from the whole run of things that's a no all right yeah, cool so. well thank you for um sorry josh go ahead uh i like blitzwing <laughs> we were we we well we were we were not gonna go there and i think that's that's probably the best way to leave it because i know you and i are not going to ever agree on that <laughs> so thank you for joining us for fkt number Nineteen. Know what number this is? Uh, nineteen. It's nineteen. Yep, yep. The doc and, says nineteen. Uh, Blitzscream. Uh, I'm Blitzscream. I'm Drew. Um, RD, would you like to give out any links or shout outs or? Uh, no, not today. Not today, <laughs> Josh. Um, I finished. I finished Hello Dolly, so I can't really plug that. <laughs> no you can't it's over that's sad <laughs> actually yeah, right. I do want to say something okay. uh, there's been a long delay uh, with uh, the release of the the newest uh, series 6 episode uh, yeah I kind of noticed yeah yeah and, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people have noticed and uh, don't worry we're not gone forever uh, we're just going through a little bit of a change and uh it's a good change don't worry uh but yeah i'm trying to figure out how to how to handle it so, rd rd be very yes. very careful this is the transformers fandom we hate change <laughs> curiously i know no i i believe me i'm part of the fandom i hate change too uh it's not like that's which... the entire point of the franchise or anything uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's still happening. So, you know, uh, take heart, listener. Yeah, <laughs> listener, the <laughs> one. <laughs> All right, thank you, everybody. Good night. We'll see you soon. Take care. <laughs>